One of my smaller paintings is today's backdrop. It's a mere 137 centimeters tall, 54 inches. It's, as usual, it's sideways. It's of the Golgi apparatus, aka the packing and shipping department of the cell. It processes and stores proteins and lipids, wrapping up whatever's needed in a bit of membrane and sending it on its way. This canvas will probably be in a group show opening the 21st. Speaking of anatomy and physiology, and throwing around a few thoughts on the unfortunately and unnecessarily, but understandably, fraught relationship between feminism and trans issues. Nothing attempting to be definitive, especially considering my obviously limited perspective. But our dominant notion of androgyny carries a problematic overvaluing of the masculine, paired with a devaluing of the feminine. In other words, the the issue of masculine identified or masculine of center assigned female at birth androgyny is not an inherent flaw, but it's not just about what we do see, skinny, conventionally pretty white people, but also what we don't see. What the media allows us is assigned female at birth bodies, somewhat regardless of those individuals' gender identity or sexual orientation, cutting a dash in so-called men's clothes, while assigned male at birth bodies in more femme expressions are yet to be taken seriously. All too often crass jokes and assumptions of drag ensue. Some queens who are cisgender men unwittingly contribute to this conflation of drag and trans. So that doesn't help either. Clearly trans feminine individuals are not taken seriously, partly because anything more feminine, or at least effeminate, is automatically lesser in our minds our minds as they have been trained by patriarchy. There's nothing wrong, per se, with people who happen to be thin or white, dressing up bodies perceived as female, in clothing perceived as male, as m more masculine, and the world being cool with that. The, the problem is that this is all we ever get to see of androgyny. That feminine as lesser issue ties into the backlash against trans women whose, st whose style is high femme and the invisibility of both non-binary and non-heterosexual trans people. Those of us who are non-binary and or non-straight are attacked from within the community for defying the standard trans narrative, while very feminine trans women are attacked from within the community for supposedly playing by the rules of the standard trans narrative. We cannot win as long as our perception of transness is so narrow. However, this is an effect of the oppressive gender system that cis people have forced on us. We're just trying to navigate the hostile territory of the cis-dominated world. To be continued. There's a good deal more touching on the development of and questions of validation of my trans identities, but I happen to be a bit short on time at the moment. Tschüss.